Okay, welcome back. So I'm going to do a couple of problems um, looking at compound beams and frames and machines just so you have a few additional problems to work through. My suggestion is either print out the uh, problem statements and try to work it on your own or at least get it set up and then go back and watch the video and um, see how you did. So we've been working, remember, with simple, simply supported kind of beams and cantilevers and we are going to be moving into compound. That's where we have an internal pin. I'm going to approach this pretty much the same way. Um, I'm always going to start with a free body diagram. Sorry, I can't find my straight edge. There it is. Okay. I'm going to start with a free body diagram and I'm going to call this one overall. And when I look at overall, I look at external only. Okay, I don't consider internal pins. I'm just going to pretend that that's not even there. I'm just going to consider my reactions and any loads that I might have. So I can see right here at A, I have a rocker. And a rocker will develop resistance in this Y direction. Um, if I push down, I can't go anywhere. But much like a skateboard, if I push uh, with an X force, it's going to rock and not resist. So we don't develop a load. And because it's a rocker, okay, we could have rotation, which means we're not developing a moment. When I look here at B, I could develop both a Y component and an X component because I have a pin. Okay, over here at C, I'm back to having a rocker. So we just develop that Y reaction or we have the capacity to. And then I'm going to kind of simplify this with a point load but I'm going to go ahead and draw on my free body diagram where we might see that load. So how do we make a uniform load into a point load? We just need to basically integrate, which is finding the area under the curve. And when we have simple um, shapes like this, we can use our simple geometry equation. So the base is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 meters. The height is 2 kilonewtons per meter. My meters cancel out and I'm left with 24 kilonewtons. Um, I also know that when I have a rectangle, the centroid is right through the center. So that 24 kilonewtons is actually applied right there on B. So I have 24 kilonewtons. I have 6 meters and I have 6 meters. Okay. So we can go ahead and start with our typical equilibrium equations. Okay, we can sum forces and we can sum moments. And we have three of these when we're looking at a, at a beam in, I call it 2D. Okay, so I'm going to start with summing forces in the x direction. And I'm always going to tell you what, what my rule is. I'm summing forces, what direction I'm summing, and what I'm going to call positive. And we know the sum of our forces equals zero. So I'm going to quickly go across. The only force I have is BX. So I have all my forces, and I know all my forces equal zero. So BX equals zero. Easy peasy. Now let's look at, let's just go ahead and set up summing forces in the Y direction. Okay. And so I'm going to come through from left to right and find everything. Um, I'm calling up positive. So I have AY plus BY minus 24 kilonewtons plus CY equals zero. So I'm going to rewrite this with all of my unknowns. Whoops. When I move it over, it becomes positive. It's always the algebra equals 24 kilonewtons. Okay. So I have three unknowns there. This isn't going well. I've already used two equations. I only have one equation left. So I'm going to go ahead and write moments, and I'm going to sum those about, I'm going to just pick point A. It doesn't matter. If I did B, I'd still have A and C unknown. If I did C, I'd have A and B unknown. But we're just going to go ahead and set up our three equations that we would normally use. So I'm going to put my finger on A, and we're going to use right-hand rule positive. So counterclockwise. If I come across, I have BY making a positive moment times 6 meters. I have minus 24 kilonewtons also times 6 meters plus CY 
times 12 meters, and all of this equals zero. Um, I'm going to get my meters out, and that six, going to just make that a two. We're going to simplify. I like simple math. So I get dy plus 2cy equals 24 kilonewtons. Okay. And again, I have one, two, three unknowns, and I only have two equations. So this is where we can go now and look at compound beams and the second step of our problem. So again, a pin, an internal pin, um, it can transfer, we're going to call it shear and normal. That's going to be forces to the X and forces to the Y, but it cannot transfer moment. So again, a really quick demonstration of a pin. Well, this would be like a frame, is that the internal pin here is going to transfer any force that I put. If I'm pulling, my hand is pulling back, and it's because we're transferring through the pin. If I try to pull this earpiece up towards me, I'm pushing back down with my thumb. The force is transferred through the pin, but once I apply a perpendicular moment to my earpiece, I have rotation. It does not transfer a moment it rotates instead. So if I, again, I could take my little screwdriver, I could unscrew it right here, and I could lay out the earpiece, and I could lay out the frames of my glasses as two separate pieces, and then represent that pin with unknown X's and Y's. Um, I know sometimes when you're a student and you're learning a new skill, you don't really know what you're needing to draw. My favorite thing is post-it notes. If I can take it apart at D, then I'm going to cover it up right here. And I'm going to start drawing free body diagrams of, I'm just going to call it segments. Okay. And here I'm going to have A, B, D. A, B, D. So again, I draw. I still have that unknown A, Y. I have that unknown B, Y. And where I can transfer through that pin, I can transfer both X and Y forces, not a moment, okay? I also don't want to make the mistake that I see many students making is pulling this 24 down. This 24 kilonewtons was based on the assumption of 12 meters. When I just look at section ABD, I'm only at 9 meters, so I need to reevaluate my point load. Okay, so I need to just look at the point load that's going to be that nine meters. It's still at two. So we have nine meters times two kilonewtons per meter. Meters cancel out and we have 18 kilonewtons. I also know when I'm dealing with this rectangle that that's going to go straight down through the centroid. So I have 18 kilonewtons. Um, if it's nine meters wide, then I have 4.5 meters on this side and 4.5 meters on that side, okay? That's my free body diagram. Because I took it apart at the pin, okay, I can now cover up this side if I would like and just look at segment DC. When I look at segment DC, okay, I have this unknown CY. I also have that pin that can transfer both the X and Y. Okay, when I draw these, I need to make sure I'm drawing them equal and opposite. Because when I put this back together, put the Y's back together, the sum of this equals zero, which is why you don't see it on the overall external. Okay, also, if this piece is pushing over here on DC, that pin is pushing on it, then DC has to be pushing back to keep that pin in equilibrium, okay? Likewise, if this is wanting to push down and we're, we're sending a force down across that pin, on this side, I need to be pushing back up, again, so that we don't have motion because we're in statics. Nothing is moving, okay? So I'm going to relook at my distances, and I'm going to recognize, again, that I still have this uniform load of two kilonewton meters, but this time I have it just over the three meter section. So I'm going to have three meters, that's my base, two kilonewton meters, that's my height, and I get six kilonewtons as my point load. Okay, so let's look. Six 
plus 18 is 24. Okay, we just separate it by segments. So knowing that we have equilibrium equations, um, I can start with either section. I can still sum forces and sum moments. If I look at my left section, ABD, if I were to sum moments about D, which get rid, gets rid of my unknowns here, I still have an unknown AY and BY. It's the same scenario as up here that I have three unknowns in the Y direction. That's not helpful. So now let's look at D to C. When I look at D to C, I can see that if I just simply sum the moments about that pin at D, and the sum of my moments are zero, right hand rule positive, I get negative six kilonewtons times three meters. Oops, it's not times three meters, is it? I didn't label it. When I don't label, I pull off the wrong things, okay? 1.5 meters plus CY times three meters, and all of this equals zero. So I get three CY equals 1.5 times six, which is nine. CY equals three kilonewtons. It's a positive value, so my assumption of going up is true. And remember, when we give um, solution for a reaction, we always have the positive magnitude. We have our units, and we're going to show the direction that it's actually acting. I like to go back and add these values to my free body diagrams because then I know what I'm doing. Okay? Let's go back up here. Now that I know that C is three kilonewtons, I'm left with one, two unknowns. And I have summing moments and summing forces, two equations. So I could very simply continue through with my equations for overall and use up here to calculate that we get, well, let's just do it in our head. Two times three is six. Six from 24 is 18, positive. Okay, now remember on your homework and exams to show your work, but I'm going to show you an alternate method. Once I have 18, I can come back up here and quickly find that AY is 3 kilonewtons positive, so it too is going up. Okay, so I'm going to call this method one, going back to my overall free body diagram. The other thing I could do is just use these segments. If I can figure out what DY is here, then I know what DY is here. So... Let's continue. Let's sum forces in the x direction. They equal zero. So dx has to equal zero. And if dx on this side is zero, dx on that side is zero. Okay? Now I'm going to sum forces in the y direction. So I get dy minus six kilonewtons plus three kilonewtons equals zero. dy equals three kilonewtons. Okay? For this internal, I'm not going to show up or down because this figure, dy is going up. This figure, dy is going down. I know that we're transferring three kilonewtons in the y direction across that pin. And I don't, I can't say up or down because then it's very much figure dependent. If I had gotten a negative value here, okay, then that would have told me this assumption of up on this figure was wrong and in fact it would be going down and if this was going down I'd have to recognize that over here it's actually going up okay but we assumed it correctly so let's put our three in here and let's put our three kilonewtons now that we have dy assigned to three kilonewtons we could actually just look at our smaller segment we could sum moments about b or a doesn't matter we're going to sum them about b they equal zero, so I get negative six meters times AY plus 18 times, okay, now I have to figure this out. This is three, this is 4.5, that's 1.5 meters, okay? And then I'm going to get negative three, so that's clockwise rotation, times three equals zero. And hopefully, when I solve this out, I would find that AY equals three, not meters, 
three kilonewtons, positive, going up. So real quickly, okay? So that's it. We will see you next time.